Today I'm doing a DSG service on a 2014 Passat TDI. That's the only transmission that came in a 2014 Passat TDI. So the DSG service, uh, it's a really important service. The DSG transmissions are very good transmissions. They are not problematic, but it is critical that you replace the transmission fluid and filter every 40,000 miles. Um, it's not like it's gonna blow up if you go 50, but you wanna stay on top of it and the interval is 40,000 miles. If you take it to a dealer, they will charge you upwards of $400, last I heard, who knows what it's at currently. So, uh, so it's not a cheap service, so if you start thinking about doing that every 40,000 miles, it's, it's a notable service. But it is not a super hard service to do, so I'm gonna kinda cover what you need to do. Uh, first off, I've got the service kit here from Pentatosin. So here is our fluid. This is, I believe, a five liter jug. And then we've got a filter with some O-rings. So I've got this thing up in the air. I've already got the pan, the belly pan off of it, so I'm gonna show you what to do. So one thing I'll mention here is that I'm kind of doing this in a little backwards order. It doesn't really matter, but I've already got the car in the air, so I'm gonna start by draining the transmission. Uh, if you are just doing the DSG service, I was doing some other things on this one to begin with, but if you're just, just doing a DSG service, you can start with it on the ground and you can change out the filter first up top and then get it up in the air and move underneath. Since I've already got up in the air, I'm just gonna drain it first and then we'll go up top and then we'll come back down below and finish it off there. So I've already got the belly pan drop down here. Um, across the back, we've got three T45 fasteners and then down the sides and one in the center, we've got some little screws that are T25. So uh, I've got all those pulled out, got the belly pan drop down. Now we're gonna pull the drain plug on the transmission which is a 14 millimeter hex bit. Okay, now that we've got the drain plug out, now I have an eight millimeter hex bit that we're gonna put up in here to drop down the fill tube. The fill tube is how we set the level when we're done. And so of course nothing's draining out because it's correctly filled at the moment. But once we get the fill tube out, the rest will drain. And there it goes. So this car has 134,000 miles on it. I don't know the service history. A buddy of mine just bought this car. So we're going through, we're getting all this stuff taken care of to make sure that it's on schedule from here on forward. So it's pretty well drained here. So I'm gonna actually put the drain plug back in. I'm not gonna put the fill level tube back in, but I'm gonna put the drain plug back in and we're gonna drop the car down and we're gonna change the filter. This is where things get a little trickier because we have to take the battery out to drain or to, to get to the filter. So that's the biggest part of this project is uh, pulling the battery the air box, the battery tray, and getting to the filter that's on top of the transmission. Okay, here we are up top. So um, we need to get down below the battery here. So there's uh, a few things we need to pull out. So we're gonna start by pulling the air box out. I have a five millimeter Allen bit, hex bit. There's one bolt right in the corner here. We'll take that out, loosen it up. We got a vacuum hose to unplug right there, and we've got our mass airflow sensor cable. We can set those aside there. And then we've got our clamp on the intake boot. We'll loosen that up, move that back. And then we've got our lid. Be gentle with these. I see lots of these with broken off tabs. There's three little tabs here. Just gently pry those so we can loosen it up. And then we can get this popped out. And there's a couple little uh, rubber boots holding the assembly down once we've got this one bolt loosened up. So we're gonna kinda grab onto it and give it a good tug here. Got one. And the other. So uh, now this thing is loose, so this is a little tricky. We've got a few things going on here. We've got a, a plastic tube right down in here that goes down below the headlight to drain water. And then we've got this uh, 
intake that loops around under some hoses and goes into the bottom of the box. So if we do this right, we can, oh, and then we've got our, our uh, warm air inlet on the bottom. We've got a, a hose to disconnect down there. I'll show you what that looks like once we get it out, but that just slides off. It's kind of like this up here, just smaller and no clamp. I've got that removed now. We're gonna swing this up, get this plastic tube out, spin this whole thing around, and we don't actually have to remove it. You can, but we may just set it right there. Sometimes it's a little easier to just leave it sitting there. So we've got it out of the way anyways, that's the important part. So now we can move on to the battery. And what I like to do, you gotta be a little careful if you do this, but what I like to do is energize the electrical system so that I don't lose any memory in the radio or anything like that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pop the cover off the uh, electrical box here, and I'm gonna use my jumper pack, and I'm gonna put 12 volts straight onto this, and, uh, and then we can disconnect the battery and the system will still be energized but we can get the battery out of here. The important thing is that you keep tabs, maybe put a, a rag or some tape around the positive terminal so that this doesn't short out on something if you let it set down. You don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna get that set up and I'll be back in a moment. So I've got my jumper pack installed here. I'm right on literally the battery cable, right where it goes into the power box here. And then I've got the ground. There's a ground that goes from the engine to the chassis down below and I've got it right on that. So. Got that all set up. So next we can take a 10 millimeter socket and loosen up these battery terminals. We can pull the positive off. And like I said, be careful where that sits. And we can pull the negative off the back here. And then right down on the side of the battery, we've got a 13 millimeter bolt that we need to loosen up. That's what clamps the battery down. And this one's clamped down good. That's nice to see. Sometimes they're not. Here's our 13 mil. We'll just back that all the way out. We can take out the clamp and the bolt. Set that aside. Now we should be free to get the battery out. And it's always a little bit of a pain. We got some handles here to work with. I should mention this car did not have the uh, thermal insulator pad around the battery. If it did, that just simply would need to, you've got like the lid that you flip open and you can get to the terminals. Once you get the terminals off and the cables off, then you can just lift that whole insulator that just goes around but not underneath the battery. You can lift that up off of it and continue with everything else. So this did not have that. Um, but if we look in here, we've got a 10 millimeter there, a 10 millimeter there, and a 10 millimeter there. So we're gonna loosen those up. Um, I think we've got this cable here that's got a little Christmas tree type fastener um, going into the battery box. So we're gonna pry that up and that should be the only thing that we need to, to disconnect from the battery tray. And then we can get those bolts out and lift it right up out of there. Our three bolts are out of the way. Now we're just going to use like this trim tool here. Go down and pop that battery cable off. And then we can lift that straight out of there. Okay, so now I've got a 24 millimeter socket on an extension. We're going to drop this down here. Crack it loose. It shouldn't be particularly tight. Uh, this, the O-ring is what seals it up, not the tightness of it. So when you tighten it up, keep that in mind. I don't know the torque spec, but you barely need to go past hand tight. I'm gonna loosen up the housing lid. There's the O-ring right there, which we'll be replacing. We'll set the housing aside. And then we're gonna reach in here, pop the filter loose, let it drip a little bit, and catch it. Now that filter looks a little cruddy on the outside. Um, but yeah, so it's probably overdue. The fluid does not look nasty, but it probably was well needed, this service. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suck all the oil out of that housing, which isn't necessary, but I feel better about doing that. So I've got my pneumatic brake bleeder and we're just gonna drop the hose down in here and suck everything out. So there it is. You can see it's kind of continuing to run in from that port there, but it's nice and clean. There's nothing alarming in there to be worried about, but it's, it's just a good idea to kind of get it cleaned out good in case there was something in there. So our kit from Pentatocin comes with a new crush washer for the drain plug, as well as an O-ring and a filter for up top here. So we're gonna open this up We'll install our filter down in the housing, and then we should be able to, maybe I'll need to grab a pick, maybe not. Grab the O-ring off of the housing. We'll wipe it off. And the inside is important, so we'll make sure that that's nice and clean. We'll install our new O-ring and I'm going to put a dab of the fluid on it so that it goes in nice. Just dip my finger in it, put it around, got that lubed up. Then we can reinstall it here and you can pretty much tighten it all the way down by hand here. Then we'll grab our socket and ratchet and just give just a fraction of a turn, just to snug it just a little bit. So we've got that all done up top. So now we can start loading everything back in here, getting this all back together again. Then we're gonna lift it up and we're gonna finish off on the bottom. Back down below here, we're gonna pull the drain plug out again. We might get a little bit more fluid out because it probably, probably evacuated a little bit more of the transmission, so there you go. So that's probably a good reason to either uh, let it sit for a bit longer or uh, maybe do it any order I did. Pull this, go up top, then kind of come down here and pull it again. Either way is fine, we're getting all of it out. Uh, then we're gonna Pull our old crush washer out of here since we got the new one with the kit. We'll set that aside. And then uh, now, um, once this finishes the draining, we'll let it drip a little bit longer here. Then we're gonna put the fill level tube back in and then we can install our adapter and pump it full of fluid. Okay, so it's just about done dripping. I think we're pretty good. So we're gonna take our six millimeter hex socket and we're gonna reinstall the fill level tube here. We're just gonna screw it in hand tight. You definitely do not want to put a ratchet on this. We'll hand tight with that. We'll wipe everything off. And then we've got our adapter here, just a tube coming off the bottom. We're gonna install this. This is another thing that just goes hand tight. There's an O-ring that'll seal it once the threads bottom out. Um, and then we are ready to hook our pump up to it and pump all the new fluid in. So I've got the drain rolled out from underneath it. We don't need that under there for now. And I've got my little pump hooked up in the jug. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is that you absolutely wanna make sure that this pump is not contaminated with something else. Uh, I have a dedicated pump specifically for this, so nothing but DSG fluid goes through this. Uh, you would not want to like pump gas with it one day and then DSG fluid the next with contamination in there. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. Uh, the, I'll, I'll link in the description for these pumps and the adapter and, and everything specialty that I'm using here. But uh, now we're just going to pump this entire jug, all five liters. We're going to pump it all in here and then we're going to start this thing up and let it warm up. So I'm, I'm going to probably skip a lot of this because it's going to be kind of boring, but just pump away and eventually you'll have all five liters up in the transmission here. So I've got all of it pumped up in there. I just set the pump and everything into the uh, uh, drain pan here. And now we're gonna start it up. We're gonna run it for 10 to 15 minutes. 
Um, if you don't have a way to check actual temperature of the te transmission, then 10 to 15 minutes should get you in the ballpark. But the specs are 35 to 46 degrees Celsius or 95 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna plug in my scan tool and, uh, and make sure that I hit that exact target, but we need to get it up to that temperature. And then we're gonna pull this fill adapter out and let anything drain that's extra. And then we'll be able to put the uh, plug back in. I've had it run in a few minutes. We're gonna see where we're at. So uh, I've got my scanner plugged in. This is from Harbor Freight. This is a Zurich ZR15S. Um, we're gonna go, I plugged it in. There's no codes present. We're gonna go to menu. We're gonna go to service check. We're gonna wait a moment here. And then we're gonna scroll down. I need to reset the oil life. I just changed the oil out. We're gonna scroll down to transmission fluid temperature. So we're at 87.8, so we're almost there. So I am going to give it a few more minutes here until we hit that 93 degree threshold. And then we'll move on to the next set. Oh, there we go, 91.4. We're gonna be there momentarily. So uh, we'll get back under the car and get ready to check the fluid level. So we've hit our target temperature. So we can pull this fitting off of here. And I think what I might do is I might just pull the hose off first. And there we go. That's what we're looking for. We want it to dump the excess fluid. So you can see it's, it's dumping kind of more than I expected, which is great. That means we had plenty of fluid in it. So uh, I'm going to start loosening up the adapter here. We'll get that out of the way. We're kind of just down to a dribble, so I think this this is about where we want it. So we'll put our our drain plug back in with our new crush washer on it. I've got my torque wrench set to 33 foot pounds. All right, we've got that torque down. We're gonna wipe off the drain plug. We'll get the drain pan out. And now at this point, I'm gonna shut the car off, I'm gonna put the belly pan back on, drop this thing down, and we're good to go for another 40,000 miles on the DSG service.